Hey everybody, what I want to talk about in this video is the concept of frequency and how we can access that frequency property on the oscillator node in the Web Audio API. So here in VS Code, I'm in my app.js file, and as you can see on line one, I've instantiated an instance of the Web Audio API's audio context here. And then I went ahead and I used the create oscillator method on the context and assigned it to OSC for oscillator. And then I went ahead and connected that oscillator to context.destination, which is your computer's audio output or your speakers, for example. Now, what I want to do really quickly is console.log out the oscillator object and take a look at it in the Chrome Developer Tools console. So here's that oscillator node object. And what I want you to take a look at here is this frequency property, which is in itself an object. In the Web Audio API, these type of properties are known as audio params, as you can see here. Another one on the oscillator node is the detune parameter, or audio param. Now we're going to use this frequency audio param to manipulate the value here. And that value is the value in hertz, or cycles per second. And we'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. Now let's go back to VS Code and get rid of that console.log. What I want to do here is look at assigning values off of that audio param property on the oscillator node. So I'm going to do that by taking my oscillator, using the frequency property, and using the value property on that, and then assigning it to a number which will represent the frequency in hertz. So I'm going to start with 440, which will correspond to 440 hertz, or cycles per second. Now just so you know, this particular value is actually the default value. So even if we don't put this, this is the frequency that we'll hear by default. Now we have our oscillator created, and we have a particular value assigned to the frequency of the oscillator, and that oscillator is connected to the destination. The other thing we need to do, of course, is to start the oscillator playing. We do that with the start method. And I'm going to pass in here the number 0, which will basically say to start the oscillator playing immediately. And for this example, we'll have it stop after one second. So when I call the stop method, I can pass in the number 1. And let's save our file now so we can hear what we have. So there you could hear an oscillator playing at the frequency of 440 hertz. Now, of course, we can come in here, and we can change that value. So let's have the value. And now when we save the file, we should hear that oscillator playing at 220 hertz. And let's try one more. We'll just do something random. We'll say 600 hertz. So what you can hear is all those different values are creating different pitches or different frequencies. Now, let's take a moment to look at the idea of frequency a little bit more in depth. So, as I just mentioned, in the Web Audio API, the default value for frequency is 440 hertz, or cycles per second. Now, why would this be? Well, the value of 440 hertz has a little bit of a special importance for us, because 440 hertz is actually used as a reference pitch. What I mean by reference pitch is that Imagine if you had an orchestra with several instruments in it. All those instruments would want to tune up to some kind of reference, so ultimately they'd all be in tune with each other. So here we can see actually the note A, or that concert pitch I was talking about, on the musical staff. This A is the A above middle C on the piano, sometimes also referred to as C4. Now what we see here is a diagram of a piano keyboard, and you can see that C4 here, right in the middle, and that it corresponds to 261.63 hertz. Since this is a piano, and a piano has one of the widest ranges compared to many other instruments, you can see that it spans all the way from about 32.7 hertz on the left to 4186 hertz all the way on the right. And that's a pretty wide range of notes. So when you play those notes all the way to the right on the piano, you're actually playing higher frequencies, 
and as a result, you're getting higher pitches. And vice versa, if you play the notes all the way to the left, you get very low pitches, corresponding to lower frequency values. These frequency values are a result of the oscillation speed of the waveform. So imagine on an instrument like a guitar, where you can tune a string up or down. If you tuned it all the way low, that string would vibrate very slowly, and you would get very slow oscillations corresponding to lower pitches. If you tighten that string way up, and you increase the tension a lot, the string would vibrate really, really fast, which would result in much higher pitches. And one thing to take note of here is that when we go from C4 to C5, for example, we have basically a doubling of frequency. So C4 here is about 261.6, C5 is 523.25, which is basically a doubling of frequency. And you can see that if you start from the bottom, C1, and continue going up, C2, C3, C4, C5, and so on, you'll see a doubling of frequency. Now when we double the frequency, we also say that we're going up an octave. So take C4, for example, at 261, if we go to C5, we're now going up the octave. We can also say that we're going down an octave if we divide the frequency in half. So going from C4 to C3, we can say that we're going down one octave. I thought it'd be cool to take a look at the waveform on an oscilloscope, which I have here set up in Logic Pro X. The source of the sound here is a sine wave, and you can see those characteristic smooth curves in the wave shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the tone starting at 20 hertz, which is a super, super low frequency, which is just about an audible. And I'm going to sweep up higher and higher throughout the frequency range. And as I do so, take a look at the oscilloscope and see how the visual representation of the waveform changes. You'll see that the oscillations of the waveform start out wide and slow, and that gradually, as the frequency or the pitch increases, they become more and more narrow and bunched together, because there's many more oscillations occurring in the space of a second. So I have a little challenge or experiment that you can try. What I'd like you to do is, in your HTML, create an input that has a type assigned to the value range. And this will give you a slider, basically. And then in your JavaScript file, try to assign an event listener to that slider and have your oscillator's frequency get its value from the slider's value. So this way, as you slide the range input, you should hear a sweep of pitches, going from lower pitches to higher pitches. So take a moment to do that, and then let's check out a solution. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in my HTML file, and I'm going to create an input of type range. And for now, I can get rid of the name and ID properties, or attributes, because I won't be using them here. And I'm going to set a minimum and a maximum value. You could set these to whatever you like but I'm going to set mine to some reasonable settings. I'm going to give my minimum a value of 220, which will correspond to 220 hertz. And I'll give my maximum a value of 880, which will correspond to 880 hertz. I'll also put in a value attribute so that I can basically set a starting default value. And I'll make that 440, which will correspond to A440, or concert pitch. And then one last thing I'll do is I'll use the step attribute so that I can adjust the slider in more fine-grained increments. Now in my JavaScript file, I'm going to come in and I'm going to have to first get that input from the DOM. And I'm going to do that by using document.querySelector. And for now, I'm just going to grab input. I'm not going to assign an ID or a class or anything for this example, just to keep it simple. 
I'm also going to assign that to const, we'll call it frequency range. Now that I've got that element, I'm going to assign an event listener to it. So I'm going to say frequency range dot add event listener. And the event I want to listen for is going to be an input event. And that's going to trigger whenever the slider is moved. And now for my second argument, I'm going to pass in a callback function, which is going to take the event. And what we want to do is we want to get the event.target.value and assign that to oscillator.frequency.value. So we can say oscillator.frequency.value equals event.target.value. And another thing I'm going to do, and this isn't totally necessary, but I'm going to console.log that event.target.value so we can get a visual representation of the number value of the, or the frequency value. Now I'm going to comment this line out because we're getting the starting value from the input slider itself. And I'm also going to comment out the oscillator.stop because I don't want it to stop after one second. For this example, I want it to keep going so we can experiment with moving the range slider. So now if I check out what I have in the browser, I can see that I have that range slider here. Let's go ahead and save the file. And when we do, I'll come in here and adjust the slider. And we'll take a look in the console, see what numeric values we're getting, which represent frequency. And we should also be able to hear the frequency changing or the pitch changing. And there you go. Well, hopefully in this video you learned a little bit about frequency and you also learned about the usage of frequency in the Web Audio API and how to set different values to that frequency audio param in the Web Audio API. See you next time.